Greetings and welcome back, noble friends, to Yogscast Game Night, where I, Lord Crackleberry the mm. Third, mm. Earl of Wessex, uh, I'm joined by my three noble companions here mm. as we discuss our illustrious adventures across the world. Who am I joined by today, sir? Lieutenant Governor Timmy McGee from the Yukon Territories of Canada. <laughs> and, sir? Baron von Trotsny. Uh, born in Transylvania, raised in Hull. Oh, a lovely land, sir, may I, may I just say. I have been to your estates. It is Don't beautiful. Don't lie to me, Crackleberry. Very beautiful there. And, sir, who are you joining us at our table of noblemen? All right, I'm Dave from Australia. <laughs> Dave. Dave from Australia. What, what kind of nobility blood do you have running through your veins, Dave? None, mate. None? But surely you must be descended from English aristocracy. Uh, were you oh. sent to the colonies as a prisoner? I mean, a peasant? No. no, sir. My dad was James Cook. Your dad was James Cook, the great adventurer. The year is 1830. And mm. I have brought you here to this table to wager with me who of us among us has the most exciting tale of our adventures around the world. Ah. Clearly old well, Baron. But, but obviously I know some of you. I like to exaggerate your tales somewhat. And so we will be watching your tale with interest to call you up on any kind of little mistakes maybe that you've just overlooked or forgotten. Maybe, maybe, you're, you're, maybe you were drunk. Maybe your memory was a little bit hazy. Mm. Who knows? So Trotnemus, uh, I mean Baron von Trotney. Trotney. Lord Trotney. <laughs> <laughs> tell us how you, tell the story of how you trained a Siamese fighting fish to, 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 to take on larger and larger foes and ultimately form some sort of mega fish. Uh, that was, which was a scourge of the seas. Tell us how that all started, Ben. Mm, what usually... an interesting sounding tale. I can't wait yes. to hear all about it. It Cap goes way back, 10 years. Oh, when I was away. sailing across the eastern seas. Oh. And I landed in China. Oh. And there I met an ancient guru, 200 years old, man. Now, Don't I... interject, that's true. One moment, <laughs> I, sir. I have never heard of a man living to 200 years old. And in fact, I would have done. I would have read it in the papers. I very much doubt that there is a man who was ever 200 years old, sir. Sir, he said he was 200. The papers do not reach China to the UK. And I believed him because he kept drinking this strange green liquid, which I said every drink gave him an extra year. Okay, so basically you're accepting that he was 200 years old. You're saying... That he was definitely so. You either have to accept that he's two hundred and give me a coin back and say he, he was two hundred, or you have 200. to say, oh, maybe he wasn't. You know. So, yeah. so, so I okay. reject your. You reject my 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 inclusion. My, in, in, yeah. So he was two hundred. A two hundred years old. So I cannot believe it. And then I looked down at his feet, and there I saw on every toe a salmon suckling. My goodness, what a tail! What mate, a tall no, tail, no. sir. Fish need water, mate. And <laughs> they're just like. Hang out on the land and eat people's right. toes. You're right. You're right. They're dead. They were dead. Oh. Uh, they were actually the defeated fighting fish of this man. He was training fish, and I said, "Good God, man, you can't possibly do that." And then he showed me fighting fish in this little pool, two little fishies with swords strapped to their little bodies, fighting. Little titties. Well, <laughs> you know. Little fish they, uh, fighting uh, with each sir, other. Sir, uh, just one one moment, uh, Baron von Trotteny. Mm. Well, I'm just interested in 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 in, in how the, the 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 fish could hold swords with with being only as they they have very very small fins, sir. And well, they, 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 they cannot hold swords. They held them with leather straps attached to their you know the base of their bodies. Oh, so they were. And their sword was just pointing forward like uh, a joust. So, so they had the sword strapped to them. Strapped I to see, them. sir. Okay, you, yes, you yes, may yes. have my wager. I it's see, mostly just jousting with fish. Ah, in right. a little swimming pool. I understand, sir. And you know me, Crackleberry. I have many an enemy. And I took it upon myself to inject them with steroids. Ah, sir, okay. To attack and kill anyone that came up against me. And you know what? I killed everybody. Excuse me, sir, but actually, we went to school together, and I saw you on the wrestling team, and I don't remember you winning once. Actually, I remember you crying like a little girl yeah. every time you hit the mat. Don't bring it back. So I find it really hard to believe that you've actually killed anyone, let alone left the comfort of your but house. Actually, you simply weren't listening to my story, were you? I am a fragile, weak little shit. I use my fighting fish to fight for me. Oh. 
All you I need to do, corrected. sir, is, is make a man jump into your pool. Yes. And then he will be fought to the death, sir. What a fantastic idea. I applaud your courage, sir. Now, <laughs> we, we, will, we will have a little drink. Have a little drink. Now, if you get thirsty uh, during a story, you may just oh, you may just say your throat is very parched. parched and, and we will move on to the next story. So, w- would you like to go next, Tim? Timmy? Well, Lieutenant I was, Timmy? I was kind of hoping, Crackleberry, that you would tell us all about the time instead where uh, Me, sir? you invented the steam powered flying carpet and why its use is not more widely adopted because uh, that was a real fail. Well, um, sir, this, this tale is a fantastic one that takes us all across the world. In my, in my travels across Africa, I encountered a small man in a tent. His name, he called himself Vizier Timbuktu. When, when you say a small man, was he like a dwarf or like just a very short man? He was a dwarf, sir, yes, actually. He was a dwarf and a dwarf a pygmy man, oh, a very pygmy. small man. And uh, he, was, uh, he was completely nude and he sat on a flying carpet. Which, which, which he, which he actually. Hold on, hold on, hold on. That sounds pro- a little bit fantastical carpets, and carpets magical. Carpets don't fly, mate. What are you talking yeah. about? Oh no, on? carpets definitely don't fly. All right, I, uh, under normal circumstances they wouldn't. But this man, he had cut a hole in the bottom of his uh, flying carpet, and he was farting out of it, and it was propelling the carpet into the air Jesus on these Jesus. incredible farts. And because he was so lightweight. And because he was obviously malnourished, maybe like a bird, he had hollow bones. Who knows, sir? He was keeping himself in this, in this tent, very smelly in there, sir. Uh, he was hovering up in the air. And I thought, goodness me, this gives me a terrific idea for an invention. So, post haste, I returned to my lab up in England, uh, at one of my castles, and <laughs> I set to work building the most incredible fart contraption. Crackleberry. Sir, what was the problem? We all know you can't fart. You have a sealed up asshole. Yes, Crackleberry, that, uh, I mean, Trotimus, that has been one of the things that has plagued me throughout my life, the sealed up asshole. I have had to very much reduce the amount of uh, things that I eat Mm. and uh, nourishing nourishment that I get. Because, you fart from your mouth, don't you, Because I do fart yeah. and poop. Right out of your nose out and your mouth, too. Other orifices. It's, it's horrible to behold, disgusting, sir. Crackleberry. It's disgusting, Crackleberry, sir. Crackleberry, I'm a little bit confused because when we were on the wrestling team together, when we were both young aristocrats... I wasn't on the wrestling team with you, sir. I'm sorry, we've no, never met we you before in my life. we were definitely on the wrestling team together. I remember I did a really punishing takedown on you one time, and I accidentally farted in your face. And it wasn't the takedown that knocked you out. It was your complete inability to handle the smell of farts. How were you able to stay conscious, conscious the, the entire time you were talking to this farting dwarf in Africa? Well, my throat is very dry, sir. I'm afraid of... Oh, uh, oh, can someone else possibly take over <laughs> from me? Uh, so, uh, why don't you... Uh, what was it? Mahogany, sir? Uh, no, no, no. Right. it was Dave. Dave, Dave. Um, so, so, Dave, Dave. You, 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 gave us a, uh, you gave us a brief idea of your story when, you, when we were having a smoke earlier, and you said... You, you told me of a, a tale when you shaved the head, your head, completely bald, uh, in celebration of Queen Victoria and Prince Albert's wedding. You were there, sir. And uh, you, you were actually asked, I remember you were asked to leave the reception. It was in all the papers. So can you tell us why that happened, sir? Your embarrassment, Dave. What, what happened at the reception, the wedding reception? Why did you shave your head bald? Yeah, darn thing. I was in the country. <laughs> <laughs> to, uh, to obviously see, I had got an invitation because I'm, I'm like hot shit, Becky in Oz, <laughs> James Cook and all that. Oh, yeah. Um, hang on a sec, can I just have a quick goosey? Oh yeah, yeah. That's why I was there. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so they had their wedding, and they were like, "Come on, Dave, you, you'll be great there. You'd love it. Free food." And I'm like, "Totes." But <laughs> so I went over there, and obviously says, "Sorry, mate, no afros." And I was like, "What's wrong with afros?" And they're like, it's a "Dress code, mate." That's not an afro, Dave. Those are cornrows. Cornrows. <laughs> and you give it back. Well, he's obviously cornrows. He's got an eagle eye right there. Um, <laughs> trot. <laughs> <laughs> but so at the time, at the time, obviously this is a while ago, as you can see, I had a fro. No, you didn't. You had cornrows. You took his money. You definitely had cornrows. I, I, I he saw a picture of you. Don't lie to me, Dave. Oh, don't call me a liar. <laughs> Dave, I'm confused because when we were young boys together and we were on the wrestling team, I remember doing like a pretty sweet choke slam on you, yeah. and I'm pretty sure I slammed all of the follicles out of your head. Yes. And 
probably yes. prevented you ever from growing hair again. So how do you explain that one? Like, how did you get a fro? That's exactly what happened, mate. Did you want to take the coin if he's right? Well then, uh, that is, uh, obviously, I... Um, you were bald I, since the age since he slammed you. That's it, yeah. Yeah, it was a really powerful slam, I mean. Tried everything, that didn't come back. Um, but anyway, I got into the wedding. So hang on a sec, you were, the cornrows weren't real, they were a wig. So I just had to take them off. And, yeah. and there I was. And then I went in there, I was like, all right, queen, where's the Danny? They were like, where's the Danny? And, and, and like, <laughs> threw me out. I was, that, 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 you know. They, what, they thought they took offense at your uh, Australian lingo, sir? Well, I think they, they just don't like toilets. Bit uptight, you know, <laughs> royalty. <laughs> So, uh, Timmy, what about you? Tell us, Timmy, how you invented the submersible dirigible and why you were unable to obtain a patent for it. Someone else had invented it before you, perhaps. So the year is 1830, and in the Yukon, um, we got wind that there was some gold under the sea, um, and we had to find a way to get to the bottom of the sea to dig that gold. Difficult. I tried it with my fighting fish. Didn't work out. Mm -hmm. um, so when I'm not busy governing the Yukon Territory in Canada, I have a science lab at home and a wood shop. Um, so I combine the two together to form a science wood shop, and I came up with a blueprint for a vessel capable One of moment, submerging sir. under the sea, but having the passengers within survive. Now, thanks to a rubber hose that stays at the surface to let the air in. What a fantastic invention, sir. Did you create this yourself? I certainly did. My goodness. And, and what happened? Did you build a prototype? Yes. How did that process happen? Well, it was a miniature. Okay. So I got a piece of wood. In your hands? And I whittled it. With your hands? I did some whittling. With your hands? With my hands, yeah. I interject. When we were kids wrestling together, <laughs> remember, you remember. I remember. And I tore off both your arms. That's right. <laughs> How did you possibly manufacture anything without arms? Well, I had to learn how to whittle with my feet. And I whittled myself new arms and hands out of fine Yukon wood. My God. I wouldn't tell. Anyway. You couldn't tell, sir. They're such tell. works of art. Wait, wait, hang on a sec, mate. You, you're saying like... Thanks, you guys. Like <laughs> Thank you for the compliments. <laughs> I really appreciate it. I really appreciate these fine compliments, gentlemen. That's so that was a tough one to work with, but you did it like a champ. And anyway. now you have two wooden arms. <laughs> now, the story might get a bit I can, more I can whitt whittle at double the speed because not only do I use my wooden arms and hands, um, which are very dexterous, mm. but also my feet. Um, so I whittled together a prototype, submersible, with a miniature rubber hose. After we went down to the bottom of the sea and got the gold. Now, sir, well, man, well, let me interject. I remember from our time wrestling as a young boy. <laughs> I remember. It all goes back to that. I boxed you round the ears, right good and proper, sir. Yeah. And what happened was your sinuses were all fluffed up and puffed up. And, and from then on, you could never take a high pressure. I remember one time we were flying in a hot air balloon and you, your head almost exploded, sir. You certainly couldn't take the pressure of going under the water. Well, Crackleville, I invented the submersible, <laughs> but I did not go down under the sea 20,000 leagues ah, to get the gold. Fine. I sent my manservant down there to do it for Good, me. Good, sir. Knowing full well that much like the Death Star, my head would explode under the pressure at the bottom of the sea. So my manservant went down anyway. Wait, 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 wait. sorry, man. What's a Death Star? Uh, it was another <laughs> secret prototype that we came up with, a miniature. I whittled it. Uh, it's <laughs> actually a planet with a gigantic weapon built into it. Like a planet for ants. Yeah, designed to destroy other planets. It was going to be a Canadian national secret, but Bertie. we never got it to patent. Bertie, planet? Yeah. What shape did you whittle it down to? Um, it's spherical. Whoa! We live in... We in, all know we the world is flat, Bertie! <laughs> <laughs> Mate, in the 1830s? <laughs> flat as a pancake. I'm sorry, I think you're a little bit behind the times. We know there's The world is definitely flat, sir. No, the world is definitely round, and I can prove it. 
with my prototype Death Star <laughs> modeled after the very planet that your father is named after, Uranus. Oh, yes. uh, so, so you never got the gold, sir? We got the gold. No, sir, I had, had you never got the gold, sir. We because get, we, I found out that the manservant was actually living amongst us now and is very, very wealthy. He is only Lord Baron Trotney now. He yes. has a large <laughs> estate yes. in, yes. The, in the North Umbria. Technically, the technically who, we got the gold, but it was swindled right from under mm -hmm. our Canadian noses by the villainous Lord Trottleberry from Hull, Hull and, Transylvania. and Transylvania. Anyway. What a tale, sir. So after we finally managed to get the gold and the gold was stolen from us, we decided, hey, now we're kind of poor. Maybe we should get a patent on this submersible and start selling it to other countries because it could really do the business. <laughs> <laughs> It'll get us a lot of money. All right. And it turns out that the patent was denied because actually the Pope already had his own Pope submersible. Well, there you go. Invented Shit. and patented and he was already selling it to other countries. What a story, well, that's pretty Incredible. Cool. Yeah, incredible. So I think now we have all had a chance to digest one another's tales. The tale, of course, of how you trained the fish with swords and used them in jewels. The tale, of course, of how Corn rice. Uh, you, you got in trouble with the queen. The tale of, uh, that you've just recanted, which was almost so boring. <laughs> about the submersible The pope pattern. got a submersible paddle. <laughs> And I can't remember what mine was at all. Well, I I've had a farting uh, flying steam, carpet. Steam a, car. I called it a flying fart pit, uh, but it never caught on. Fart pit. Uh, and so, with that tale's done, now it's just time for all of us to, to put our money where our mouth is and choose who tonight will win the wager for the best story. Now, of course, I, I will go first. Okay. <laughs> I personally... The most noble. Uh, ...am the most fond of the story about the fish. There you go. Would the you like one? Jousting I fish. would very much like one, sir, yes. Salmon, I think we've been eating it today at the table, in fact. Very tasty, sir. That was my prized fighting fish. Oh, no! <laughs> what day? But you brought it to the cook, sir. 300 kills. You left it in the kitchen, sir. I did. 300 kills. 300 kills. kills. <laughs> he evolved into super trout. I called him Rambo. Trout him <laughs> uh, okay. Well, that is very generous of you. However, I fear that. I never liked you, Dave. Oh, fuck you're a peasant, it, you're not noble, and you're from Australia and you're disgusting. <laughs> wow, wow. However, you tell a damn good tale. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Really, because I tripped up majorly with the cornrows. Just take the money. <laughs> I've got to give my vote to the fart rug. <laughs> the fart rug. Oh, oh. Deflected, mate. All right, Sips, so I think the decider is on you. You haven't got any food. You haven't got no one's vote for the story. <laughs> Somebody it's lift one of my arms, please. <laughs> I would like to place my things on also the fart rod. Oh, hooray. Um, I thought that was great. Oh, thank you. Oh, here, well, there's these two too. In that case, my tall tale was the best this evening. Uh, thank you for joining us on Baron Munchausen and those extraordinary adventures. We'll see you all next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.